Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. I am going to get right to the point today because I don't have a lot of time, you don't have a lot of time, and as of this filming, we are one week away from the Princess Half Marathon Fairy Tale Challenge weekend, and today we're talking all about last minute items that need to be in your bag so that you are ready for the big weekend. Ah, I'm so excited. Okay, so first of all, I'm swamped right now. I I'm crazed. I don't understand how this race snuck up on me and this always happens to me. You know, you plan for something, you train forever, and then all of a sudden it is just upon you and you realize, do I have everything that I need? Did I pack everything I intended to pack? So um, I've got a bunch of stuff in front of me that I literally just threw in my ready box, which is this little plastic tote right here that's mostly, I mean, obviously I'm not gonna go over with you guys that you need to have your running clothes. You know that. And yes, I will be doing an entirely separate video all about specifics of packing. But these are the smaller things that I think are specific to run Disney race weekends that you may not have thought of. And you still have time to throw those in your Amazon cart. So down in the description box below, I will have a link to my Amazon affiliate storefront. You don't pay more. I get a teeny tiny commission. And I always encourage you to check out prices. You might find these things cheaper somewhere else, but that's just an easy way for me to have everything in one place. You can go there and everything that I talk about will be in there. Hi, Maxie. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm filming a video. Here's my dog. He's a great Pyrenees because anytime he shows up in the videos, somebody always asks. Um, and he's 115 pounds and he's nine years old and he's just the sweetest and I love him. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna pull out of here, but it is a drawstring bag. And let me tell you why you have this. When you go to the expo, they're going to give you your drop bag. And you'll see a lot of people walking around the expo with the drop bag awkwardly slung over their shoulders. It is not a comfortable bag. This is my friend Coral's first run Disney Expo. So I'm anticipating we're gonna be there for a minute. Like the last couple of years, I've gotten into just sort of running in and out of the expo, but we're really gonna to wanna to show her everything that's there, which means we're gonna be there for a while. And in case I pick up any packages or do any shopping, hey maxi or anything like that a drawstring bag like this one is fantastic i can throw this in my other bag and once we get our shirt and our bib and all of that i can comfortably wear this around the expo now i might try to see if i can find one this one is one i picked up at disney world years ago i'm sure amazon has some cheap ones these can be i mean you probably have one around your house that your kids got from soccer camp or something so uh, just a really lightweight drawstring bag for the expo also, should have said this, you can also throw this like this inside your drop bag, and that way you'll have a comfortable bag for when you pick up your drop bag after the race. So again, you're not trying to manage this big, uncomfortable, plastic, slingy thing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, when they give it to you, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So lightweight drawstring bag, number one. The second thing I have in here is a couple of Mylar blankets that are from past run Disney events. Now, these are great to stick in your bag. I have so many at this point. Some of you maybe save them for souvenirs. I like them for sitting on the ground in the corrals and they also give you just a little bit of warmth. It looks like it's gonna be maybe in the high 50s before we start running. So certainly I'm not gonna need like a big old fleece or anything, but having these little Mylar blankets can really help you not get chilled Chilled. Also, if it, it's drizzly or anything like that, these are great. So I'm taking a couple of those. If you want to see what these look like, because I think some of you, it's your first run Disney event, so you've never seen one of these. Or maybe you've seen them like in people's videos, but they look like this. And they're huge. Oh, Mickey's upside down. They're huge and they say run Disney on them. And they're really not good for more than a couple of uses because they are very thin, but they will keep you nice and warm. And they also pack up really, really tightly. So it's an easy thing to pack and it's not gonna take up a lot of space. By the way, I am carry-on only on this trip. So everything that I am showing you will be going in my carry-on bag. All right, the next thing that I will be bringing is my swell bottle. Now your swell bottle 
or some kind of reusable water bottle. The reason this is important is you really wanna make sure you're staying hydrated as you're walking around the parks. I don't like to pay for bottled water. I also don't like the environmental impact. So although we did get a case of water for the room and you know, run Disney weekends are my one exception to that. I usually don't like to do bottled water. When we're in the parks, it's really nice to have this. It's also nice because the water stays cold. So even just to have next to my hotel bed, um, it's great to have nice cold water. So this is definitely going to be going with me. Okay, next up, I have wet ones. Now, I have multiple types of wet ones. Um, I have a big one here that I'll take for like maybe in my carry-on bag. This one will actually be going in my pocket for the race itself, and this is for porta potties for porta potties. Porta potties are an unknown dark situation and it is never a bad idea to have some of these on hand. I'm not going to go into any detail as to why I've had some bad experiences in porta potties. By the way, there are real restrooms available on the course, but not until you get to Magic Kingdom for the half marathon. Um, there's several along the 10K course. It's not nearly as big of a deal, but half marathon, it's porta potties only until you get into the Magic Kingdom. So if you can hold it until you get to the Magic Kingdom, that's a great tip because you can use a real bathroom. My favorite is the one in Tomorrowland, but you know, it doesn't matter. Use whatever bathroom you want. You're a big girl, you can handle it, or boy. <laughs> Okay, and then I think I have one other, yeah, and then I also have these little wet ones. Now, these will go just in my park touring bag, but I mean, I'm a white girl. You can never have too many of these, right? Because germs, and especially right now, right? Germs. We've got flu, we've got coronavirus, we got all kinds of stuff going on, so yeah, do that. All right, next up, I have got a little bit of snackage going on. Um, these are my new go-to fuel source. I norm Okay, so a little background. I can't do goos and gels. They do not do well on my stomach. I have to have real food and not for the 10K. I won't need any food for the 10K, but for the half marathon, I do like to take in a few calories. I used to do Rice Krispie Treats. I just recently started doing Biscoff cookies, you guys. Is that focusing? And oh my gosh, they have become amazing. I've done them now for two long runs. I also like that it's a little two-pack. It's really small. I can put it right in the pocket of my running skirt. And yeah, I'm going to do one probably around mile five, and then I'll do another one around mile 10. So Biscoff cookies, hashtag Delta Proud for the win. And also in here, I am packing some of these Tide to Go peanut butter cups. Normally I eat organic peanut butter. Did I just say Tide to go peanut butter cups? No, Jif to go. Don't eat Tide Pods. <laughs> but I'm gonna leave that in. That's funny, I don't care who you are. These are Jif to go. These are edible and these are great with a banana, with an apple, just even on their own with a spoon. Um, it just always feels like they don't have peanut butter or if I do buy peanut butter like at the store, I don't wanna get a big old thing of it. I also don't wanna order a big old thing of it because we'll never go through it all. So these little ones are perfect. So those and my Biscoff cookies are coming with me. I'm packing hand warmers even though I don't think we'll need them. Again, it's going to be in the 50s when we're waiting around in the corrals, but it's Florida, so you never know. And if you live in a cold place and you run races, you know these are fantastic for in the corrals because they just keep you from freezing to death. So I'll probably throw those in there. Body Glide. Body Glide. This is actually just called, uh, oh no, yeah, this is actual Body Guide. Glide. It comes in a bunch of different brand names carry this. It's all the same. It is a stick that is to keep you from chafing. That is what it exists for. Places you may want to use this. In between your thighs, underneath your arm, um, right here on your bra line, your back on your bra line, your toes. I found that the best way to prevent blisters is to basically coat my feet with this. Florida humidity is next level, and I don't know what the humidity is going to be like yet, but once your feet start sweating and it's humid, it can be a whole thing. So I coat my feet with this before I put my socks on, and I, since I started doing that, I have had zero issues with blisters, so I definitely recommend picking up some Body Glide. By the way, they will also have Body Glide at the um, expo in at many different places. There's usually at least one full-on running store that's there. Check your... Um, event guide for which running store will be there, but you'll be able to buy this if you forget it. 
Speaking of things you can buy at the expo, this is the Noon Hydration Tabs. You guys have heard me talk about this until we're all blue in the face. Um, this is actually not the one that I use. I'm out of it and I don't know what I did with the ep empty canister, but I use the one with caffeine for race day. Uh, and this will go with me. I will drink a couple of these uh, before the race. I will drink one of them during the half marathon. So I'll drink one before the half marathon, one during the half marathon, probably one after the 10K. So I will take a whole little tube of these. Um, I, noon is what I swear by. And you guys, I have tried like every energy drink in the world. As I've said before, I have a very sensitive stomach. And this is the only thing I found that does not make me queasy and cause stomach issues when I'm running. If you have not run with this yet, however, don't do it. Don't do anything new now uh, just because you don't know how it will affect your stomach. So whatever, uh, you know, maybe you're good with what Disney gives you on the course, which I think is Powerade. Yeah, it should be Powerade. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you have something other than just water so that you can be hydrated. All right, next, just regular Kleenex. I don't even know why I threw these in here, but you know, it's cold and flu season. Again, not a bad idea. Just a little thing like what your mama would have to have in your bag. This puppy. This is upsetting to me, but last Run Disney Race and Brooke, BB Brooke, who a lot of you know, she is a wonderful friend. I adore her. I will actually put a link to her website below. She's the best. Follow her on Instagram. We were running and my breathing got super weird. The humidity was incredibly high. This was last year's uh, marathon weekend. I couldn't breathe and I've never had, well, that's not true. One other run Disney race, I had had that same experience. So when I went to my checkup, which was not long after that, I asked my doctor about it. And she says, it sounds like you were having an um, exercise induced asthma. And it wasn't like I was out of breath, like cardio out of breath. Like I could not breathe. I couldn't take a full breath. Even if I was walking, I couldn't take a full breath. So she gave me this lovely little inhaler that I will pack it in my skirt. And if I need it, great. If I don't, great. But I don't ever want to go through that again because it was actually kind of scary. So I now have a rescue inhaler. Obviously, you need a prescription for this. But if you're a person who has asthma and needs an inhaler, don't forget your inhaler because, you know, that's the thing. Sunscreen. Now, Coral is actually ordering an Amazon box that will have a larger sunscreen. I'm going to pack this little one as well because it's only three ounces and I can put it in, you know, with my liquids bag. But it will be dark when you start running, but that sun will be coming up and Florida sun is no joke. And what you really don't want to have is chafing, sunburn, and exhausted legs from running a race. So make sure you put sunscreen on and put it places you wouldn't think, like the backs of your legs. Um, if you're wearing a tank top, make Make sure you get really well like this area right here is where a lot of women get burned and also like the top right here because we don't think about that top part of our cleavage that doesn't normally get exposed. If you're wearing a tank top, make sure you have on plenty of sunscreen. I like this one because it is um, four faces and if I sweat a lot, it doesn't run into my eyes. So any of the um, sports sunscreens are good because you really don't want sunscreen running in your eyes with sweat. That's yucky. All right, now we're down to just a couple more items. These cannot unfortunately be purchased on Amazon, but we have our magic bands. A dream is a wish your heart makes. Okay, so I got the, let me make sure I got the right one. I think this one's mine. I mean, they're all the same, but um, Coral's getting a more fun one for the second part of our trip. She just got blue because she just got back from Disney and she's got a bunch of different magic. I think she got the Toy Story one too. And then we both have the Pride Magic Band, which I think I'm going to pack that too. But this one is the white. It says most magical place on earth right there. And I'll insert a picture of it too. And then it's got Mickey. And I just love that it's white. Check out the castle. I don't know if you can see that detail. I'll insert a picture so you guys can see it. Uh, you do want to wear your magic band for the race. And here's why. Well, if you're staying on property, you can pay for things with a credit card or usually cash, like if you want to get coffee or whatever before the race starts. But um, you can't get back into your room without your magic band. And if you're, uh, if you're staying in an Epcot area resort, which is we're not this year, but I do love doing that. A lot of times we would walk back through Epcot on our way back to the hotel. Well, you can't do that if you can't get into the park. So make sure and not forget your magic band. Make sure and not forget. I was an English major in college. Let's change that to don't forget your magic band. Yeah, 
That's better. Don't forget your magic band. And then lastly, I have my waiver. Now this was sent to you in an email from Run Disney. I don't want to show you any of my, my stuff, but um, it looks like this. It is a legal piece of paperwork. It just says, if you get tripped by Mickey Mouse, you're not going to sue him. It doesn't say that. <laughs> Might as well say that. Um, and you have to have this with you. Now, I only have one waiver, I think, for the entire fairy tale challenge. Yes, only one waiver for the fairy tale challenge. But if you're running, say like the 5K and the half marathon or the 5K and the 10K, you're probably gonna have two waivers. If you forget to print it out, it's not a big deal. They will have a computer there set up so that you can do it when you get to the expo. Uh, I forget it as often as I don't. So we'll see if this actually goes in my bag. Uh, but especially think about this, like if you are checking a bag, if you're using Magical Express, make sure you've got your waiver. Well, if you're me and you're going to the expo on arrival day, make sure you have your waiver with the things you'll be taking to the expo. Because more than once, I have printed it out and had it all ready to go and it was in a checked bag, which doesn't do me any good at all when I go to the expo. All right, so there's more that I could have put on here. Um, I don't have my small external uh, battery. It's actually downstairs, but I'll have one of those in the Amazon storefront. You definitely want something like that if you use your phone for your music and pictures and your interval timer like I do. Um, your phone may struggle uh, with its battery life because you're asking it to do so many things. So a compact external battery is a great idea. Just a little lipstick charm charger, even one of the fuel rods if you've got one of those. Actually, I have a couple of those around the house. Uh, but something that you can give your phone a little bit of extra juice. Um, also, I'll tell you that the Wi-Fi and the data situation is always terrible right before the race starts. So make sure if you plan on connecting with people before the race, don't plan on like Instagram Messenger. Uh, definitely plan on actually being able to text them. Uh, that's in my experience, we've I've made plans with people to meet up that way and then we just couldn't get any connection to work. I think there's just so many people and so many phones and everybody's trying to post to all of their Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all of the things. I mean, what are you gonna do? It's the reality of the situation, but you don't wanna not be able to connect with your party after the race. So, you know, make sure that you can actually reach them. And in my experience, texting is a better way to do that. Okay. So I'm thinking what we'll do, this is, I'm recording this on Thursday, I'm gonna put it up on Friday. I'm thinking we're gonna do another Run Day Monday Live and I will do it Monday night, um, just for last minute Run Disney questions. If you guys wanna do that, tell me in the comments below. I am more than happy to do a live stream Monday night. So um, yeah, let me know. Wow, we're so close. Uh, don't worry, that was the last thing I wanted to tell you. You're fine. Your training is fine. This is Christmas Eve, right? Whatever you haven't bought, it doesn't matter. Whatever you didn't do that you should have done in your training, it doesn't matter. Trust your training. It is gonna be such a great weekend and I cannot wait to see you there. Have a great day. I hope whatever you're doing, you're finding joy and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.